Okay, now we're going to do parts definitions for your firearms. I've got a selection here of striker fired handgun, hammer fired handgun, both semi automatic, pump action shotgun, and this Ruger 1022 will be our semi automatic rifle example. Different parts exist on different designs of firearms. Some parts are common, okay, but the words matter and it helps everyone understand what you're talking about. So let's start with the frame. Okay, frame is a term used in handguns. I don't have a revolver to show you, but pretty much the frame is the lower half of your handgun, semi-automatic handguns in this case, or the portion of the revolver that is not the cylinder or the barrel. The part of the handgun that includes the grip, your trigger assemblies, magazine well in this case is all parts of the of the lower frame now this Ruger SR22 here the barrel is actually attached to the lower frame this is just an interesting design for this particular handgun some others may use that design oftentimes especially when you start talking about carry handguns this is this is what you're going to have is a separation of your frame from the rest of the gun. Here on this gun, you'll see this, because this is striker fired, you don't have uh, some of the other assemblies like on the uh, SR22 here, we've got our, our hammer group here, but both of them, they both have whatever trigger linkage and assemblies, sears, springs, all kinds of fun little moving pieces in here. Both of these have safeties that are built in. Some firearms will or won't have safeties uh, like Glocks. They won't have a separate safety. The safety is just built into the overall design of the handgun. Next, we have the slide. Again, this is a term unique to semi-automatic handguns specifically. Slide is the upper portion of the handgun. This is the portion that you'll pull to the rear to charge, to, to load a round for, for firing. It will normally include, as you see on both of these designs, you've got the firing pin, which you can kind of make it out here on the back, that little small square in the middle. Firing pins also come through here on the front on this one, and then there's a hole right here where the firing pin comes out of the the slide here you also have an extractor on this sr22 it's quite large and obvious you got the extractor there's a little bit of there's a spring on here so there's some tension on the striker fire this ruger handgun here this is the extractor here on the sides but again it's got a little claw and uh, what that claw does is it holds on to the the rim of the casing that's in the handgun. And when it's fired, that claw does its job. It's an extractor. It extracts that casing uh, as the slide moves to the rear. And then another item on here, different guns have different designs. You'll have the ejector, which will push or launch the shell out of the way. And then the slide travels back forward, picking up a new round from the, from the magazine here, stripping a new round off, loading it into the barrel and we'll get to parts of the barrel in a second but that's the slide and it's different parts if you notice here on the striker fire here at the rear this right here is what gets cocked and locked to the rear that then your uh, when you pull the trigger it fires releases and the firing pin launches forward or the striker launches forward and strikes the primer and fires the gun in these slides you'll also have the slide spring and the guide rod. Uh, all this does is this gives that tension. So you feel that when you try to pull your slide to the rear, well, that's this spring pulling against it. Over here, this SR22 also has a slide and a spring, much lighter, of course, but they're as heavy as is needed for the different guns. Next, we have the magazine. I went over an entire episode just on magazines, but you see here, this is a magazine. It holds the ammunition, feeds it to the gun for use. It's got a several different parts all to itself. You can feel it. There's a spring in there. 
This top piece is called a follower. It follows the ammunition up, I guess is how it gets its name. You got the actual box itself and you have a floor plate, just a few pieces. When cleaning, you can actually disassemble these. You push in this little pin on the bottom, floor plate slides off, out comes your spring, your follower. Pay attention to how those come out. Usually you want them to go back in in the same direction orientation, up, down, make sure it's all the same way that it came apart. Some are finicky, some aren't. Just be careful, know your firearm specifically. But you can pull this apart, that way you can get inside of here, clean out any uh, carbon residue or whatnot that's got down inside the box. re lube, oil your springs, so on and so forth. Here we have a barrel. And I'm going to talk about several different parts that are part of the barrel. And this applies to any barrel. The barrel on the shotgun, the barrel on the semi-automatic, on a rifle, they all have these same constituent parts, mostly. I'll talk about the one exception I can think of. So, this, uh, this barrel, here's your front end, here's your back end, okay? For orientation as it sits in the firearm, it's pointed this way. Bullet comes out this direction, right? Okay, so we'll start from the back. Here on this particular firearm, most semi-automatic handguns, they'll have what's called a feed ramp which is this angled part, and it does exactly that. The magazine with a ammunition sits just like this. As your slide comes forward, it pulls uh, ammunition off the follower or off the magazine. The front of the bullet goes up the feed ramp and into the very first part we'll talk about here, the chamber, okay? And it's probably, you can probably kind of see the ledge that's in there that's a little bit larger than the rest of the barrel. That indicates the, the end of where the chamber is, okay? And what happens is the ammunition sits in that chamber waiting to be fired. When you pull the trigger, boom happens, forward goes the bullet, and then your whole firing cycle happens, pulls the, pulls the case out. But that's the chamber. And then as you look on, as you look on down inside, if I can get that into focus, maybe, ah, there we go. It helps if I put it over something. And you can see inside there, it's dirty. Why is it dirty? Uh, well, I was naughty and I haven't cleaned this since the last time I fired it. Only fired a magazine or two through it, so it's not terribly dirty, but obviously it's not great. All right. So anyway, in there, you can see that spiral twisting. That's the rifling. That's going to be present in modern handguns and rifles. Incidentally, that's where they get their name, rifles, is from this rifling. What this does is this grabs the bullet, spins it, and that spinning action stabilizes it, gives you accuracy out to longer ranges. Shotguns, most of them will be smooth bore because they're shooting shotgun pellets, and that's the exception between parts of a barrel. Now, this is an extremely important portion of the firearm, especially when it comes to cleaning. We have the muzzle, okay? The muzzle is the very last part of the barrel, very end of it. And the part that is critical to cleaning and that you need to be careful about is the crown. Now, this, this barrel has a recessed crown. And what that means is that the rifling edge here at the very end, doesn't come all the way out flush with the larger outer portion of the barrel. They've ground back that crown. The manufacturers ground that crown back to push it away. The reason for that is your crown is the very last part of uh, the barrel that touches the bullet just before the bullet leaves the barrel. Very last thing touching. So whatever that is, if it's bent, knurled, uneven, if one edge is further out than the other edge, it imparts minor variations to the bullet and just before it leaves. And those differences, those variations can cause the bullet to fly off, off path. And that's where you, that can uh, greatly affects accuracy. So when you're cleaning, be extremely careful with this portion. Okay. Try not to scrape anything across it. If you've got a, if you're using cleaning rods, be really careful not to scrape them across it. Now, cleaning rods are made of uh, usually made of brass, and brass is a softer material than than the steel in your barrels. But that's no reason to be careless, so just be careful with that crown. 
I'm sorry, we gotta go back to the front or to the back of the barrel. This back end, overall back end of your barrel is called the breech, okay? So front is the muzzle, back is the breech. The bore, there's another term for on a barrel, there's the bore. And the bore is basically all that portion on the inside that the bullet touches, including the rifling, grooves and lands, different terminology there we don't need to get into, but the bore is all that internal portion. And now we'll talk about a unique item to long guns, okay? So moving on from our handguns. So we've talked about the barrel, all right? Of course, you got your stock. Here you've got a stock with a pistol grip. Four grip, four end of your stock, okay? This is a one-piece stock. This is two pieces. This is called a four end. This is called a, a butt stock on the back, okay? Now, here we have a tubular magazine on a pump action shotgun. You'll also find these on some semi-automatic rifles, particularly small caliber like 22 will have them. Those will be lever action, pump action, semi-automatic. You'll also find them on lever action, larger bore rifles like your Marlin 336 CS and things like that. Think all the old westerns you ever saw with the lever action rifles, those all use tube magazines. Okay, so the unique piece here, we've got our barrel, We've got a bolt, okay? This bolt performs similar functions to what the slide, slide face here did, okay? This front end, it's where the, where the firing pin comes out of the hole. We've got an extractor, right? Ejector, all this sort of fun stuff. Well, here's your bolt. And your bolt inside this pump action shotgun, or over here, bolt inside of your semi-automatic action here, okay, it slides forward, back and forth. Again, extractor over here on the pump shotgun, we have an extractor here. We got the bolt face. Let's come up here and let's take a look. There we go. Get some light in there. And kind of hard to see. Ah, there we go. This one actually has a dual extractor, both sides, left and right, and you can see the hole in the middle where the firing pin comes out, okay? So this is called a bolt, and you'll find, this is a moving piece that you'll find in long guns, so shotguns, rifles, pump shotguns, semi-automatic shotguns, lever action guns, bolt action guns, okay? You got your bolt. And sit in the part that holds the bolt is the receiver. The receiver is just this big chunk of metal here at the back of, of these firearms, okay? And the receiver is where your barrel will attach. You'll have, you know, this is where your magazine well, oh, this is also called magazine well, right? Uh, this has a detachable magazine, right? It has a magazine well, holds your bolt, your firing pin. Uh, in this case, the trigger assembly is attached to the receiver. In this case, the trigger assembly is inside of the receiver here, okay? Safety mechanisms will be uh, sometimes on these, like here's safety me mechanism on the back of the receiver. This one, the safety mechanism is down here on the trigger assembly. But the receiver is kind of doing both functions that you saw over here with the handgun, with the slide and the frame these two pieces working together to basically just hold all the different parts of the gun. I think, I think I've covered, I think I've covered all the key parts.